Have you seen the headlines that erythritol can lead to heart attacks and strokes? Well, if you had, it's probably got your attention. This comes from a study recently published in Nature Medicine. And what it showed is that there is this connection between higher blood levels of erythritol and a higher risk of strokes and heart attacks. So does this mean that we should all stop all erythritol sweetened products? Well, maybe, but what I think it really means is we need to reflect on why we're eating them in the first place. I'm Dr. Brett Schur, the director of Metabolic Mind. And here at Metabolic Mind, we, we explore a lot about the concept of nutritional ketosis as a treatment for mental illness. Now, if you are following a keto diet and trying to be in nutritional ketosis, you may be using erythritol sweetened products to help you along your way. And if that's the case, this study should get your attention. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what the study showed, what some of the you know good and bad parts of the study are, but most importantly, bring this back to what this means for you. Does it mean we should all stop erythritol-containing products, or can we say we need more information and can continue? Well, let's get into it, okay? First, real quick, what is erythritol? Erythritol is, it's called an artificial sweetener, but really it's not artificial. Erythritol is something that exists normally within our bodies. Our bodies produce it. It exists normally in nature in some foods, but at very, very small concentrations. But when used as an artificial sweetener, it's put in usually keto products to make them taste sweet because it tastes sweet, but it doesn't give you the glucose and insulin response that sugar does. So like a lot of other artificial sweeteners that aren't really artificial, like monk fruit or others, um, it's used in keto products like ice creams and cookies and even pancakes and, and waffles and in coffee and tea or frequently in uh, keto cereals too. So for me, that's how I use it. Every now and then I don't feel like eggs or I don't wanna make eggs for my kids. We don't have time, whatever. So I'll use this keto cereal that's sweetened in erythritol because this study made me sort of sit and reflect on where erythritol is in my life. And that's what I found. So, so that, those are some places that you can commonly find it. And people may choose to have you know, erythritol sweetened products because they don't wanna feel deprived when they're following uh, nutritional ketosis, or they like having something sweet. They feel they have to sort of uh, appease their sweet tooth. And there are other reasons, and we're gonna get into that near the end of this video. But first, what did the study find? Well, if the first part of the study was an observational study, just looking at the blood concentration of erythritol in individuals, and if that led to an association to a higher risk of cardiovascular events. And the answer was yes. The higher the blood level, the higher the risk of cardiovascular events. But this is just an observation. And since we're just measuring blood level, we have no idea if it was endogenously produced, meaning their bodies were producing more, or if it was exogenously ingested, meaning they were eating more erythritol. That part of the study doesn't show that at all. All it shows is this: there is a correlation with higher blood levels. But to achieve higher blood levels, chances are you're going to be in eating some. I think that's an assumption we can make, but it wasn't proven in the study. Now, the other thing, you know, observational studies like this, was it just because people were at higher risk of heart disease were choosing to eat these products? Again, this study doesn't show that, right? There's reverse causation. There's healthy user bias. There's so many problems with observational studies that usually we can just sweep them other, under the rug, especially when the hazard ratio, meaning the degree of the increased risk, is really low. But in this case, it actually wasn't that low. It was over two, which for me is, and for a lot of scientists is sort of the, the floor of once it's above two, then it sort of gets our attention. Again, not necessarily as causative, but certainly worthy of a closer look. Now, what this study did though, is they didn't just stop with the observation. And that's one thing I really like about this study. They took the next step and said, okay, well, if this observation is true, why? Right? We, we should be asking us that question. Why would higher erythritol levels increase risk of heart disease or strokes? And what they found is that in test tubes, um, in mice, and in humans, by raising the erythritol level, you can increase the platelet aggregation. So what is platelet aggregation? Basically, how sticky our blood is and how likely it can be to form clots. So now we have the observation and we have a mechanism. But still, even though that's sort of more of a red flag for the study to say, okay, maybe it's showing something bad about erythritol, it's still not conclusive. And look, I, w I wanna point you to some other resources online. The Twitter uh, feed of Dr. Nicholas Norwitz and of Dr. Adrian Sotomoda and Dr. Nicola Guess. All three of them have done very good assessments of this study. So if you wanna learn more, go check them out. And, and what Nicola Guess did was she really said, look, we can't trust this a whole lot. And she dug into the, 
the pre-registration of the study. So anytime you're doing a study, you have to you should pre-register it to say what you're looking for. And there were six primary outcomes, which is kind of a lot, meaning they weren't exactly sure what they were looking for. Um, and they were supposed to have 40 people in the study, but they only reported the results of eight, and it wasn't randomized. So all of those things sort of do weaken the findings. Doesn't completely negate the findings, but definitely weakens it. And interestingly, they did say there's more study going on, and they're going to be reporting more data later. So I'm curious to see what that shows. And as Nicola Guess's tutorials usually are, it was pretty entertaining with good use of GIFs. So if you want uh, some entertaining education, definitely check that out. But after a study like this, that has got its pros and cons, its strengths and its weaknesses. We're really left with trying to decide, well, what does this mean for me? What, should I just get rid of all erythritol sweetened products now? Or can I ignore it because it's not a randomized controlled trial and has all these holes in it? And that's not an easy answer, right? If you're looking for the yes, no, the study doesn't show that. But for me, what I think we should all do at this point is sit and reflect and say, well, why are we having erythritol containing products, right? For me, it's convenience. It's because I want to have a cereal I can eat or feed my kids when I don't have time to make eggs, or maybe when we've had eggs four days in a row or something, right? So for me, it's just convenience. For some others, it could be because in order for them to stay in nutritional ketosis, they don't want to feel deprived. So they want to have their ice cream, they want to have their cookies, or they want to have their pancakes or whatever whatever it may be. For others, it may just be routine, but here's the thing that I think is so interesting. What I found personally and in patients and in colleagues and in friends, you know, something very common that the longer you're in nutritional ketosis, the more your taste buds change. And what might once have been a sweet tooth now can really be something that you don't need anymore because our taste buds change and now blueberries may be totally sweet. So for me, I'm gonna get rid of my erythritol containing cereal and just use another keto type cereal or granola without an artificial sweetener and add some blueberries for the sweetener. Because now the way my taste buds are, that is perfectly sweet and I don't need anything more. And I think a lot of people who have been using um, sweetened products for a long time may find that if they tried something natural like berries or, or a very smaller dose of a sweetener, they may find that it still is enough because their taste buds have changed over time. And I think that's the big take home, right? Do we need to be consuming sweetened products. And for some people they do, right? For some people they will be triggered without it and they will just want to eat the sugar containing um, foods and will um, be triggered for a craving that may just send them off the rails. And if that's the case, then absolutely. An artificial sweetener is definitely going to be beneficial, but that is not everybody. So we shouldn't assume that we're in that bucket, so to speak, but rather this is a chance for us to sit and reflect and maybe test it to see if we can get off of uh, sweetened products that we don't need. And realize there are also other sweeteners, right? Monk fruit is a big one. Now, maybe in a few months, we'll have a study about the dangers of monk fruit. Who knows? You know, these things are relatively new at the doses they're being used and consumed now. So they've been around for a long time, but at these doses, maybe they're a little bit new. So we don't know, but they're generally recommended as safe. Um, but now we see that even when something's generally recommended as safe, we may see some studies raising concern. And the same can be said for the sweetener allulose, right? So there are other options, but please, 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 if you're going to take anything away from this study, I recommend it be just a time for ref self-reflection about why we're using uh, sweetened products and if we really need them. So I apologize if you were looking for a black and white answer of erythritol is good or erythritol is bad. I don't know that we can conclude it to this study. I personally am going to reflect and probably get rid of it because I don't think I need it, but time for you to decide if it's something you need or not and what your other options are. So I hope that sort of change in perspective was helpful. Um, and even if it's not the, the clear cut answer. So if it was, please click the thumbs up and subscribe and check out our other videos here at Metabolic Mind. And thanks for watching. Please take care of yourself and take care of others. And we'll see you here next time at Metabolic Mind.